Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today, I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the James brand, The Barnes. It's weird to, that I feel compelled to say the twice while I'm talking about this knife. Uh, if you don't know, this knife, number one, is definitely available right now. I will link it right down below so that you can, as usual, make these types of choices entirely of your own free will. Uh, but this knife has some pretty serious controversy surrounding it right now. Um, I've uh, had this for a little bit. I've got my thoughts together. So believe me when I say I'm going to be covering every last little thing uh, in this video. Everything you could want to know. Um, because if you look at the price tag of this, you're going to think, Wow, uh, how did they arrive there? Um, yeah, I'm gonna talk about this. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. You can find a link for my Patreon right down below and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This was sent to me by Jeff. Thank you so much, Jeff, for sending this in so that I could take a look at it. I really, really do appreciate that. Uh, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. So up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, and it's little brother, the Ontario Rat Model 2. So this is uh, not a big knife, but it's not a small knife. I'd still call it a full-size knife. Uh, it does have a good size to it, right in between the Rat 1 and Rat 2. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and Para 3? Once again, kind of right in between these two knives. Um, so, you know, some people are really going to be happy. In fact, I'll be honest, I'm really happy with the size of it. The size of it uh, is, you know, one that's easy to carry. It's just kind of an appropriate, still feels capable, right? It's just not a huge knife. Last but not least, the uh, Benchmade uh, Griptilian or the Ritter Hogue and its little brother, the Mini Griptilian. Closer to the size of the uh, Ritter Hogue, definitely still bigger than the Mini Griptilian. Should probably measure it. Sometimes we do size comparisons before we measure it, but that's how we're doing it today, I guess. Overall length of the Barnes coming in at 7.75 inches overall. Blade length is coming in at exactly three and a half, and your cutting edge is coming in at exactly three and a quarter. Um, which is going to be very preferable, preferable for a lot of people. Uh, if you've got, if you live in an area with a three inch blade law or less, you know, definitely watch out for that because this is going to be an, an illegal knife in your area. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. So the thickness of this knife. And by the way, if you don't know, this knife is an integral knife or integral, however you'd like me to say that. Meaning the um, frame is not two pieces, right? In this case, up against the pair of three, we've got two separate pieces of G10 uh, in a pillar construction. Right, so we've got the, the screws holding everything together with the standoffs. This is all one piece of titanium. Uh, so they mill the handle from a single block, which means there's a lot of extra precision that goes into this. It's also kind of a lot more risky machine work because you're starting out with a much thicker block of titanium and it's titanium, right? So while this knife is not manufactured in the United States, it is manufactured by Riot. Uh, the manufacturing process is one that is expensive and risky. So there definitely is added cost there. Believe me, we're going to talk about that. Uh, but anyways, the thickness of this guy is coming in right about the same as the Spyderco Para 3. Um, so that's cool. Uh, it's not excessively thick or anything like that. How about height and length up against the PM2 and Para 3? So as you can see here, this knife is basically just a little rectangle, right? Which sort of adds to the whole fancy minimalist. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to comment too much about the James brand company, but if you're familiar with their marketing and kind of how they do things, uh, the, there, there's a, there's a specific type of culture, I think, that's kind of being, should I say sold? Yeah, marketed, certain type of culture that's being marketed here. Now, I'm not saying it's anything that's minimalist and shaped like a rectangle is, uh, you know, a part of that realm. Um, but it certainly does not surprise me, you know, taking a look at their marketing that this is, you know, an aesthetic, one of their aesthetic choices for designs. Anyways... Lengthwise, we're looking at about the same length, just a hair longer than the Para 3 and a little uh, definitely shorter than the PM2. And it's also not super tall. Um, you can see there PM2 and Para 3 definitely taller around that uh, the hump with the uh, the spider hole in there. So, yeah, in terms of, uh, you know, ease of carry, this is going to be an easy uh, object to carry. Let's take a look at the inside of this guy real quick. Sorry, I turned my flashlight on so we can actually see what the heck we're looking at. So on the inside, you can see there's no milling. It's all solid titanium, which is understandable. If you think about how they would have this 
come to be. It might be kind of difficult to do that. Uh, weight on this guy, I'm going to guess. We'll do blade stock thickness here in a sec. I'm going to guess this thing's going to weigh probably at about four and a half ounces. Let's find out. Oh, so close. 4.73 ounces. Right? It's not milled titanium, right? That's not a super heavy weight. The ratios are a bit off. If you're big into ratios, right? You're going to be, oh, no, the ratios, right? As far as just the object, you know, the dimensions and the weight, this isn't going to be a difficult object for me to carry. It's probably not something I'm, I'm going to want to throw in athletic shorts, but in most other situations, it's going to be pretty easy to carry, and it's on the lower end of what I prefer to carry anyway. Blade stock thickness on this guy. Calibers, once again, way over here. I, should, I really need to put those closer to me. I can't really get this thing to stand up because these, this area back here is contoured. It's not flat, so it won't stand. It won't sit straight up. <laughs> so if you're, if you're buying this knife to get some cool Instagram shots, just know it won't sit like this. <laughs> Blade stock thickness, I'm going to guess that's 155. Yeah, there we go, 155 thousandths. I mean, that's a that's a blade stock thickness that Riot likes, right? So it's fairly thick on the spine. Cutting edge isn't bad. We'll talk about that some more. All right, so let's go ahead and comment since I just kind of like cracked some jokes about the whole, you know, culture and minimalist looking thing here. Let's go ahead and comment about the aesthetics of this knife. Actually, I really like how it looks. I gotta be honest with you guys. I really like how this knife looks. It's straightforward. A lot of people, when I unboxed it, were saying things like, the handle profile is a rip off of this. That blade profile is a rip off of this. Guys, listen, a fairly rectangular <laughs> handle shape and a straightforward drop point blade is not a rip off of anything. There are tens of thousands of knife designs out there that have basically this profile right this isn't a specific ripoff of anything this is like basic knife since the dawn of time it's not this this is not stealing anything from anybody right so but i like how it looks it's simple and a lot of times simple works right i mean that's this this handle profile is one that doesn't necessarily lock you in in any specific way ergonomically um but Fortunately, the titanium is textured in a very pleasing way. Uh, that that machine work on the titanium is really nice, and it does add meaningful uh, texturing to titanium, which is usually not what we get. Usually, even when there is texturing, it's still pretty slippery, right? So a lot of times when you see that, it's kind of an aesthetic thing. It's kind of like, oh, it kind of feels nice, right? But really what's locking you in are the, um, the ergonomic lines in the handle. And this is pretty straight, right? It's nicely knocked down. It's not sharp or angular or anything like that. But the texturing does offer meaningful traction, and I appreciate it because I can lock in on this knife. If this were smooth, it'd be much harder. And let me tell you something. There is a smooth version of this. If you get the micarta version, there's multiple variants of this, by the way. You can get it. If you don't like those nuclear thumb studs, you can definitely get one with, it's got black titanium and it's got the satin studs and the satin blade, right? If you want something really plain, you can also get the version of it in micarta. So it's got titanium with a micarta inlay here, a micarta inlay on the spine. And maybe there's, I can't remember there's one on the other side, but it's smooth. Now that one's going to be a little, a little harder to hang on to. It'll still be comfortable, but I, I would say the ones without the texturing, you're at a higher risk of dropping it or it slipping out of your hand. Um, this is all right, right? We're not, there's, there's nothing being done here that's masterful in terms of ergonomic lines. They were obviously trying to achieve a certain aesthetic, and they did that. They, they did achieve a very pleasant aesthetic with this, right? But this isn't like, oh my gosh, master for, you know, it's just, it wasn't very risky. The riskiest part of this design was the fact that it is an integral. The rest of this, pretty straightforward, right? It's been done, this, this, the look of this knife, right, the handle profile, this has been done a bajillion times over. They just added some zest in there, right? I do appreciate the machine work, especially this area back here. This is nice. Now, a lot of people are going to look at that and go, what? It's just, there's nothing there. It's just rounded, right? I don't know. Something about this is really nice. I do like how they machined this. It does take, you know, some extra effort to do that. And this is made by Riot, which... Uh, is not a, a US OEM, but they are known for having some of the most high quality fit and finish and machine work around. They chose the right OEM for something like this. Um, absolutely. I'm always impressed with Riot's work. And despite, you know, being somebody personally, when I make a knife purchase, especially one that's in the multi hundred dollar territory, I'm 99% of the time buying from a US company. But I will not shy away from Riot knives. In fact, I own multiple because their quality is that good. Believe me, we're going to talk about the price on this. Believe me. 
We didn't even do the hardware check. I suppose we should do that. One of the nice things about an integral knife is that there's basically no disassembly. You don't need to loosen a bunch of body screws or anything. If you're going to take the pivot, I'm sorry, if you're going to, if you want to take the blade out to clean it, you really just need to undo the pivot hardware. Are you serious? Oh, this whole time I didn't check. Hang, I didn't check the pivot because I thought, well, it's, it's T8. <laughs> It's the pivot of T6. <sighs> Guys, James Brand Company. Did they do T6 on one side and T8 on that? What the heck? <laughs> what the heck? I've never seen that before. <laughs> oh my God. Maybe that's why. Yeah. So it's T8 on this side, T6 on the. Guys, T8, T8 or higher, preferably T10 for pivots, right? We also have, so one of the pivot screws is actually smaller than the heads for the lock bar insert, which these guys are T8. That's bizarre. Listen, that aside, that's a mild annoyance, right? That's me personally like T8, but that's weird. Anyways, it's really truthfully not difficult to take apart. Uh, yeah, it, it's very, I mean, ease of disassembly on an integral is great because there's so few parts you have to remove to get the blade out. Right, so that's fine, no big deal there. The thumb stud is definitely in the right place and it's also shaped nicely. They've got a little bit of an area carved out right here so you can get up behind it and truthfully, yeah, you can do the reverse flick, right? The action is nice and smooth, very nearly false shut. It's just perfectly controlled. What I expect from Riyadh, right? No lumps or bumps or grittiness or anything on the inside there. It's very consistent and very smooth. The detent feels nice too. Not a knife that you're gonna be shaken out or anything like that. Deploying it feels good. You can do it over and over and over again, right? Reverse flick, getting it down here. You can see where that sharpening, well, yeah, the sharpening choil is what we're going to call it, right? It falls right on top of your fingernail, so no double clutch. It's just nice. I really like that. You can also get pretty darn close to the cutting edge by choking up here. Now, the problem is, is that the thumb stud, because of where it's placed, right, they could have maybe placed it higher, and you could definitely still get at it. I, it's always... It always blows my mind when they, I mean, the thumb stud's fine right here, guys. It's fine. But if you had placed it, if they had placed it higher, you still would have been able to get at it, would have been able to get at it just fine, and it wouldn't be nearly as much in the cutting path. <laughs> this did almost half an inch of the cutting edge is, you know, it, it's, the, the thumb stud is, is in the path of that. Look at this. Okay, I mean, you, you can still get up behind it for like some of your diagonal, like if you're gonna cut like this, you're gonna be fine, right? But it's just kind of annoying. Um, the finish on the blade looks great. What's the blade steel? It's M390. Thank goodness they did that and didn't try to, I, I love S35VN, but it wouldn't have surprised me if they were like, S35VN <laughs> on, for this price point, right? But anyways, we have what is most likely a hand rub satin finish up here and then contrasting with either an incredibly fine grained tumbling uh, or it's, I'm not going to call it vapor blasting, but it has that sort of cloudy finish that's really, really pleasing. I like it a lot. It, it really looks nice, guys. I also really like how the um, swedge comes to a peak on the spine of the blade. This is nicely knocked down. There's no areas right here where it's like, you know, shaving your fingernails or anything like that. The only sharp part of the blade should be the, the cutting edge, and that is the case here. We have a very simple drop point blade, but with some nice little details. The jimping is nice, and it's in a good spot too. You can definitely lock in here, and the, the way that they've textured it is nice. It'll definitely catch your finger. Also, really appreciate this area back here, which is actually acting as the, well, it looks like it might be acting as the stop, but now that I'm looking at it here, it's actually not contacting it. The blade is actually shouldering around a stop pin right there. So that's really interesting. And then the stop position, it must also be, yeah, the stop position is also that. So that's, look how close that gets. <laughs> when, this wraps, when this wraps around here, that's cool. There's some expert level machining here. Definitely. I want to emphasize that because I'm going to be fair about the build, right? Truthfully, the build quality here is very good. There's some stupid stuff like the thumb studs and the cutting path, right? But okay. The blade is going to be extremely functional. You have a nice tip for puncturing and there's plenty of strength. There's plenty of thickness carried out to the tip. 
Down to the cutting edge, it does not get impressively thin or anything like that, but it definitely gets thin enough to make short work of generic EDC tasks, right? We don't have any type of finisher coating that's gonna slow you down while you're cutting. It's basically just gonna be that if you're trying to cut straight down into thick cardboard, you're gonna get hung up on the thumb stud, right? But most of your cutting tasks are gonna be fine. And this is definitely a knife that you can take out and beat on for sure. Uh, there's no, I don't have an issue with that. It runs on bearings, so you might be needing to clean it out periodically or take it apart and clean the blade off or something. But um, yeah, you can absolutely, you know, a lot of people look at this and say that's pocket jewelry because it looks pretty and because it's expensive. You can still use pocket jewelry, right? If you're gonna define it that way, this is a knife that you can still absolutely take out and use. You can use it hard, you can use it light, right? It's, it'd be fine, but it's not a laser beam at the edge, but the edge is done very, very well. It's Riot. It's what we can expect, right? They've traditionally done their edges pretty thick, but they've shown that they can do a thinner edge. This is somewhere in between leaning more on the thicker side, but the blade finish and how they did everything is really, really impressive. Um, there is a place for a lanyard. It's actually part of the pocket clip, which is recessed into the integral frame. This is cool. And the screw for all of that, the position of the screw that holds that in place is right there. <laughs> that's neat. Uh, I actually really think that's cool, right? I don't really care about the lanyard, but you know what? It's totally out of the way. That's a nice way to do that if you want to have a little deedly doodly hanging off the back. Of it. This is, I'm sure some, this bothers some of you. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, you got to play with it. You, you're not going to be getting any 550 through there. You're going to have to use this freaking whatever this is, right? <laughs> I don't know. It just. It's it, This is kind of silly to me. I, I would have preferred that it wasn't there at all, but it's just not hurting anything, so that's fine. Look out. Look at this, how they've machined that. That's real nice. It looks good. Um, not reversible to the other side, unfortunately, so this is truly ready only. I'll say this. Um, by the way, this comes speaking... I looked at that symbol inside. This does come with a little coin, right? And that's neat. I feel like coins were kind of cooler a while ago, right? You get the... The James brand, modern, minimal, everyday carry, right? The irony here is that <laughs> minimal <laughs> comes in at a ridiculously hefty price tag, right? So this is cool. It's trendy, right? It's, you know, it's, it's, it's not fancy, right? They weren't going for fancy. They were going for, you know, minimal, right? Yeah, so it comes with a coin. Um, does that coin, is that, is that part of the reason why it's so expensive? That coin couldn't possibly have cost more than five to $10. So while it's neat and I appreciate that they included it, right? No, that's definitely not like, you know, the big thing there. I don't know. I mean, you know, it, it, it the, the, the coin doesn't add any specific value. Tr truthfully, I, I would say it's like whatever value you're placing on that, just remove that and don't give me the coin and just charge me less for the knife, right? Anyways, the pocket clip is actually pretty cool. It is just a straightforward rectangle, but you know what? It works really well. It's nicely knocked down and it's flat. So there's not any part of it that's like, oh my gosh, I can feel it. I could use this knife for quite a while with my bare hands and not really have any issue with it. Um, it's uh, got the space underneath the uh, pocket clip. This is part. This is what. This is the. This is the kind of stuff that's. It's. It's neat, but it's also frustrating. There are so many elements here that suggest that they definitely want to cater to the true enthusiast portion of the knife community, right? There's a lot of what they do where I'm like, they're really trying to cater to the the unassuming culture end of this. And this is guessing. I'm not saying anything factually. But then there's also elements where like they chose Riot, they made an integral knife, they're using M390 and they're doing stuff like th this smooth pad under the pocket clip, right? They're definitely trying to cater to the like educated portion of the knife community. We're getting to price. We're getting there, guys. Just hang on. This is nice, right? Credit where it's due. This is really, really nice. And it does carry nice and deep. That's all the more that's sticking at that and this... <laughs> <laughs> that's all that's going to be sticking up out of your, but you could just remove this, right? You don't have to, you don't have to mess with that. I'm just, I'm just poking fun at that. Yeah. I like the pocket clips. Cool. Honestly, I kind of think the logo is pretty neat too. Whatever that is, it's robot cat, <laughs> some sort of cat diamond cat gem symbol. Anyways, um, we do have a lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. What's this around the pivot? Uh, that's part of how they, you know, when they machine this, as far as I understand, it's like getting the internals in there, having space to remove everything. That's part of 
you see that on a lot of integrals, right? So it's part of that, it's part of that, how it has to come together and then disassembly process. Uh, it does act as the over travel stop and um, the blade is coming in dead center, which is very good. It absolutely should. All integrals should center up absolutely perfect every single time. Lockup is coming in pretty early at something like 20%. There is no blade play up, down, left, or right. They got all that right. The quality of this item is very, very good. This was very well done. I don't have an issue with that. I have a slight, a slight issue with the positioning of the thumb stud. I also don't like the nuclear color of the thumb stud, but that's a preference thing. The T6 on one side of the pivot is really weird, but okay, it's not really hurting anything, right? Um, I really like the finish on the blade. I really like the profile. I'm a big fan of textured titanium, and this is meaningful texturing, right? And you don't have to worry about it fraying up your pants because they've got that pad underneath the pocket clip that's nice and smooth, so it'll pass in and out of your pants really easily. This area back here is very plain, but very impressive. This is really nice how they did this. Aesthetically, other than the nuclear thumb studs, this is a nice looking knife, and it's a joy to sit around and play with, right? This is a modern folding knife. It's cool. It will be a conversation piece. They did a lot of stuff that makes sense. I mean, like the, you know, I mean, the, the, it, you can listen to me, but, but, but yeah, um, this is the type of thing where I don't think it would be that difficult to market this by itself, just sitting here, just being a knife is cool, right? You could put some circus music on and be like, look at this. <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, okay, I will, you know, um, so yeah, what do they want for this knife? They want $600. $600 is what they want for this. Me and everybody else, everybody else, were quick to point out that the Riot Jack 1 and 2 in their base forms were substantially less expensive. I'm not blaming Riot for this, right? Riot just made it, and they did a great job at $400, right? 400 to $450. That's truthfully where this is. Now, you're going to get people down there going, that's a $200 knife. Ain't no knife worth $200, right? Yeah. Truthfully, based on everything I've handled, if you're not familiar with my channel, I've got 1,800 uploads. I've handled a lot of knives, ranging from $20 to about $4,000. I'm very familiar with Riot. You know, as some, as somebody who's a reviewer and somebody who owns multiple Riots, this is a four hundred dollar knife and maybe an extra fifty for the Micarta inlay version, right? Anywhere in there, six hundred dollars for this guy or six hundred and fifty dollars for the ones with the Micarta inlay? No, <laughs> there is. Listen, I'm I'm known for being a glass half full reviewer. I'm notorious for going. You know what? It's pricey, but for this type of person, it's going to be more worth it. Or if you're this type of person, here's who I can recommend it to. And I try to, you know, I try to be helpful because I'm like, it's not just a static thing, right? It's very rare that I'm just like, no, right? Generally, when that's the case, it means the design is so bad, right? Or the material choice is so bad that I'm just like, I can't do this. Like, there's not enough good here to say. This thing... This was kind of frustrating because it was such a nice build, such a good look. I'm a big fan of the textured titanium, I'm a big fan of the integral nature, the finish on the blade. It's a good looking knife and it functions well. The design is very good. The quality is very good, but it's too much money. There are going to be too many people that the same market of the, they're trying to cater to the educated enthusiast knife world by adding certain elements in here that are only nitpicked. By the enthusiast knife world, the serious enthusiast knife world that is well-educated and stuff like this, right? The same people who are going to be interested, a lot of the same people who are going to be interested in stuff like this are the exact same people who are going to point out that $600 is too much money. <laughs> are they still going to sell it? Yeah, they probably will. But they're obviously, at the time of this video, they're obviously not flying off the shelves, right? 
If they had priced them at $500, this is what everybody would have said. $500 is, that's pretty high, right? You got the Riot Jack, you know, coming in at 450, the Jack 2 coming at 450, right? And if you, you're wondering why I'm using that, go look at it. That's an integral knife with much more complication that's going in. There's a lot more details. There's a lot more extra. It's also integral, but it's got extra stuff. The inlay work, the craziness of the blade, all these little things, right? Expensive knife for sure, but substantially more justified, right? I, I owned the Jack 1 in Damasteel. My Jack 1 in Damasteel, I think, came in at $650. <laughs> Made by Rhea. There is no way for me to justify that price. It's so far outside of anything even remotely recommendable. This, listen, if you're looking at this and you're going, Complex, I've got disposable income. I just really like how that looks and I wanted to know, is the quality there? Do you like, does it feel like something that would be a joy to use, a joy to manipulate? Do you think it would be a dependable tool? Well, yeah, those elements are there, you know, with a couple of slight nitpicks. So if you're just, if you've just got like, piles of money lying around and you just don't your value system's out the window because 600 or 650 bucks is just nothing to you then sure you know but guys for everybody else which is literally almost everybody else there's so much out there at this territory that's really good that is a way better per i mean for your money right you can get a stupidly good american listen the Koenig Arius comes in base. The Koenig Arius, US made knife, comes in base. 500 to 550 bucks, something like that. The freaking Hinderer XM24 comes in at $600. The XM18 three and a half inch comes in at $425. No, those are not integral knives, but they are manufactured in the United States. And those are really mega ultra high end. But listen, at 650 bucks, there's some freaking Shirogorovs that come in at that price, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. No, absolutely not. Can I recommend this knife? Absolutely not. It's cool, but it's the price is what kills it. That's rarely what happens, that the price is so crazy. I just don't, under listen, I don't make knives. This is purely based on my own opinion. But I've handled a lot of stuff. A lot of you guys watching this video have handled a lot of stuff. We have way too many examples out there that can just tell us almost immediately, no. <laughs> it's not like we're all just like walking around in this cloud of confusion and mystery just waiting for us to, someone, waiting for somebody to point us in the right direction of value, right? I mean, if that were the case, then yeah, maybe is, you know, but no, there's too many, there are way too many hyper-educated knife enthusiasts out there, right? And that's most of the people watching this video right now, right? You knew that before you even clicked on the video, right? It's super cool. And you know what? I mean, like, again, like I'm not trying to, like, I'm not trying to like destroy this company and I don't, I don't have the power to do that. I'm not saying that that's what should even be considered. Um, it's like, Hey, James brand, I, some of the stuff you guys do is really interesting. And this is far and away the most interesting thing you've done. I think it might be smart to, you know, be, be more reasonable with your prices because it, I mean, it, it's gonna, it's gonna count for a lot in the, part of the community that you're suddenly seemingly trying to cater to with some of these elements, right? I, I think it would count for a lot if you, you got the price, the price points on stuff like this for future projects. If you get it down to what, you know, look at the competition and get, get that much more competitive. I think it'll count for a lot. There'll be people immediately going, you know, James Brand just did this new knife. They're using higher end materials. It looks like a good design and it's actually coming in at a competitive price point, right? Uh, people will say, that's, that's cool. That's a smart move. It looks like they've got that adjusted appropriately. It's going to make a lot more people want to look, look at it. A lot more people want to pick it up, right? Here's the thing. Maybe they end up selling exactly as many of these that, as they made, right? That's the part that's frustrating. It's like if, if they make X amount and they sell them all, despite people like me and other people saying these are overpriced, they still were successful, <laughs> So, you know, if that happens, then they may not feel like they need to adjust it. Just rambling at this point. 
What are we at here? 30 minutes? I think we're done here, guys. This is neat. And Jeff, now that you've already bought it, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this thing because the quality is absolutely there. I mean, like, not, not for 600 bucks, but like, this is a nice knife for 400 bucks, right? That's, that's honestly what I think. Anyways, if you still want to buy it, it's right down in the description. That's up to you. <laughs> I link that down. I benefit I benefit. The channel benefits when you pick stuff up, but I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fluff this thing up just so people will buy it. I, just, I, I gotta tell the truth. Uh please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.